On this video, I'm gonna try something a little different. Those of you that came here just to see how I made the Zach part that went in the car, I'm gonna put the time over here. You guys can just jump to that and watch and see how I made the part. For the rest of you, this was a rough one. I've decided to show you guys all the mistakes, all the problems, everything I go through making these pieces. Now, it's definitely not as nice as it is in all the videos where boom, they went through these steps, everything went great, and there you go. Yeah, it doesn't work though. So, sit back, see all the problems that happen. Hey guys, so the last couple weeks I've been staring at this dash, okay? We got it all mounted, all riveted out, it looks good, and I can't figure out how I want to put the gauges on. Now a lot of you guys had a lot of different opinions using other cars like Apollo gauges, things like that, but mm, I've kind of weighed my options on it and tried to figure out one, I don't have those parts. So I'm going to use what I got. Now I have all the gauges that came out of the love when we did the build, so I don't have to buy anything. Um, but I've been trying to figure out, do I want the gauges to protrude, sink in, this type of thing. And I've decided I don't want them protruding out of the dash. So, what I'm doing now is I've made a template for the Speedo and the Tag. I'm going to take these, build a collar around it, so we can French it into the dash, sink it in, whatever you want to call it, into the dash. Now the tricky part is going to be, one, making it look good, and two, getting it to flush in that dash nice and perfect. So could be a challenge. Let's get started. All right, we got this piece cut. Now, I tried a lot of different ways. Okay, I cut it with the plasma first. It cut perfect, but it left a heat mark around it. I tried a hole saw. My hole saw just is old and tired and didn't want to cut, and I'm not able to go get one today. So, ended up cutting this with the 10 snaps. It's a lot more work, but I got it done. It's sanded and ready to go. So, now I ended up hurting my arm while we were doing it, so, old injury but anyway the sun's going to help me out here we're going to get this piece bent around it and walled it up now i've got that strip cut what i'm going to do is bend it just using a piece of pipe in the vise bend it over and bend it to follow the curve of the faceplate. That way it'll be a lot easier to weld than trying to tack and bend, tack and bend. If we can go ahead and get the shape almost there, it's gonna be a lot easier. All right, now that that strip's been cut and I went ahead and tack welded it onto the faceplate. Now, the problem is, is with the MIG, when I was tacking it, I noticed that the weld carried through to the face side. So what I want to do is go ahead and fill it out, weld it together with the TIG, and then flip it over and try to put a nice bead on the inside of it with the TIG to make it look nice. Because otherwise, you'll see these nice gauges and then 
snotty welds around the edges where the weld bled through from the back side. So, it's going to take a little bit and we'll get this done. All right, now that the pod's cooling after we welded it, got to figure out exactly where we're going to cut the dash to actually insert the pod. So what we'll do is find center where the steering wheel is going to be, raise it up just a little. I want the gauges low. Somewhere along there, we'll go ahead and lay it out and start the cut. Well, as you can tell, it's another night. And uh, I stopped here because I just didn't like it. I don't like the way it looks. It's not done by any means. I mean, I have to take and round this over more to make it match the dash, but I just don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. I'm not happy with it. So we're gonna remake this whole panel, start over. All right, guys, well, after about 15 or 20 different templates, me and Liv finally decided on this one, and this is what we're going to go with. Now, it's a little different because the gauges are in the center of the car, and with the shape of the dash, it actually looks a lot better there. It's not going to be a problem seeing the gauges, guys. This car is very skinny, so I will definitely be able to see all the gauges. No issues there. So... Now this piece is a lot bigger than my shear goes, so we're going to have to hand cut a lot of it, but uh, let's get it done. Let's make it out of metal. So last night I'm drilling out the holes on this template and my pilot bit was bent so I put a different one in. Well it didn't let me really see exactly where I was at. It felt like it was in the pilot hole so I drilled it through. Well guess what? It was a quarter inch off. This hole here is shifted over. It's not even. I don't like it. But anyway, so I took the template and I put it in the car, kind of get a feel of what it looks like. And you guessed it, I don't like it either. So I sat down, I drew a bunch of stuff out on paper to try to save some metal because I'm going through metal like crazy. And I put it on Facebook, you guys all chimed in, gave me your thoughts, this and another. So I came up with this. Now, 
I like this because it's pointed in the center, around on the sides, ties in everything in the car. I like the way it looks, centered on the dash. So, we're going to go with this. So I'm sitting in the car and I'm messing with the template, deciding where I want to place it, things like that. And I got to think, I don't want to recess this in my dash. It can't sit flat because it's not curved. And I don't want to build it out. So I got this idea, I'm going to take spacers and step it out off the dash. Now average spacer would be about a half inch. In the areas where it's curved more, they'll have to be a little taller to keep it flat. Um, I think it's going to look really cool. I'm not sure. It might end up in the scrap pile like everything else, but uh, it's the idea I got. Now, issue is, to do this the way I'm thinking, I need eighth inch steel. That way it's nice and rigid. It's kind of bulky looking, sits off the dash, look great. Problem is, coronavirus. None of the places I get steel are open. So, I dug around in the shop, everything else. I got a bunch of 18. That's all I got. So what I'm thinking I'll do is bead roll the 18 around the edge. It's going to strengthen it. That way it won't flex, it won't wobble, it'll sit there nice and clean. And when you look at it from the side, it'll look thicker because it's bead rolled over. Anyway, that's the plan. It might end up in this pile of everything else. All right, bead rolling this piece is kicking me in the teeth, all right? This one here, I'm going around, and as I'm going around the corner, my hand slips. Well, guess what? It doesn't follow the line, screwed up. This one here went pretty good, and I got to the end, where your start and your finish have to come together to look seamless. I was off. This one here, this actually looked pretty decent. It was a little bit off, but not enough that you could really tell. So I was cool with it. Went ahead and strapped it down, put the template on it, drove my pilots, started boring all the holes. Did the small ones first, no problem there. Chuck up the big one. Bit starts wobbling around, doesn't want to cut. Next thing I know, my drill burns up. So this morning I take and I go to the hardware store and I buy two brand new hole saws. Bought both sizes. They cost me about $15 to $20 each, okay? Yes, I need them. Did I want to buy them? No, all right? So now I'm down to three pieces of steel. I've got three pieces of steel left to actually make this piece without screwing up. So I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna bead roll it around nice and slow. And then hopefully the new hole saws will finish the job. Let's give it another shot.
All right, well, there you have it. That's what all this work was for, is to make this one piece. But uh, it's the look I was looking for. Now we just got to get it in the car. All right, so it's the next morning. I've came out. I took and squared up the template on the dash, got it all where I want it, taped it in place. All right, what we're going to do is mark the center points on all the gauges, drill the hole through the dash. Okay, then we're going to have to open it up a little bit to accommodate for the the ring for tightening them down, but we'll do that by hand. It, it won't be so bad just cutting a quarter inch around versus cutting a giant hole. So we'll try to use the hole saws again. We'll drill through these. That way when we put the face, I'm calling the face plate. The face plate goes on, the gauges can sink through the holes in the dash. Instead of cutting out a giant circle in the dash, we'll just go ahead and cut the holes and go from there. All right, so I took my piece, I did the layout on it, I've marked all my holes for my screws, and I've drilled the holes already. So the faceplate's ready to mount. Now, I went down to the hardware store, I bought some 3 8 copper. It's the only copper I could find that had the right, close enough to be able to fit the screw inside of. So, what we're gonna do now is take and lay this on the dash, mark just the first three holes, because they're the ones that are gonna be closest to it and straight. Then we'll take and start measuring each one and pulling it in so it's nice and straight. So it takes some time, but we'll get it done. Now, I'll show you guys the hardware I'm using. It's just 1032 machine screws. Um, I use regular nuts for mock-up and then I'll put lock nuts on it afterwards. That way it tightens up good and it doesn't come loose. So, all right, let's get this done. This is why you never buy the exact number of screws you need. I know I bought 12, and I only got 11. I can't find out. I'm looking for it right now. And I gotta find that before we move forward. Well, I tore this place apart looking for that screw, and uh, finally gave up. Hardware run, and I decided to upgrade. So, I got these stainless cap heads. They're gonna look nice and clean with all the rivets, so I don't know. Upgrade. Alright, I got all the spacers cut. It's keeping it nice and flat. I'm good with it. Now the tricky part is I gotta take them all out, figure out what spacers went where, and cut the holes, the secondary holes in the main dash, bigger to accommodate the locking ring on the gauge. So Start marking, start taking it apart. Hope I don't lose any of these. All right, I've taken all the spacers, laid them out in a design on my mat here. So that way, as long as I don't bump it, I know where they all go. So I want to put a final sand on this. There's a couple areas not 100% on. So I'd like to do that, and then I've got to cut these holes out. Once that's done, we can put in the gauges and actually put this thing in. So. Well, they're not pretty by any means. I mean, I cut them by hand. Now, I can tell you right now, everybody's gonna ask, well, just use a bigger hole saw. I don't have the right size ones, okay? It would take and need about a quarter over the normal hole, and I could have drilled that, but I don't have it. The ones I do have are too big, and they'd show the hole would be bigger than the plate going on. So, cut them by hand. You're not really gonna see them. Just need the clearance, so. And you might ask why I didn't just cut the whole design out of the dash. 
Um, I'm trying to leave as much strength in the dash as I can. So that's why I only cut the holes. Now this might go different. I might be trying to put them in and have to cut it the rest of the way, but let's see what happens. All right, guys, well, it's finally done. Man, that was a project and a half. Turned out really well, though. Um, I like the look. It matches the car. I've never seen one done like this, so that's even better. Um, if you're wondering about this stuff down here, don't, don't stress. This piece is going to cover that all up. You won't even see it. It's just excess material. So Now, when I was wiring this, I wired the lights just to show it to you. And uh, I want to put a little extra in it. So I'm going to turn off the lights and let you guys see. Now that's normal gauge lights. What I did extra, well guys, what I did was I actually took LED strips and then ones with a sticky back. I peeled them and I stuck them to the back of the faceplate. That way it glows onto the dash. Now with that, with the gap, at night kind of gives that effect that the gauges are kind of floating off the dash. That's the idea I had. Turns out it paid off. It worked great. Um, I'm happy with it. All right, guys, those of you that watched this whole video, you saw all the trouble I went through with ideas and changing and this that and the other. And uh, that's just part of the process. And I uh, just wanted to kind of show you guys that. It's not always I get it right on the first try. So anyway, guys, do me a favor. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.